hello why sir you can sit yeah yeah uh, very good afternoon to all i welcome you all to the uh, second day section of edp or simulation and simulation tool for built environment study uh, today's topic is beyond introduction to neighborhood scape climate study using nvmet uh, environment evaluation tool by dr fires and without any other introduction i will just ask uh, sir to start over to you fires sir yeah thank you <coughs> Yeah, already we have some question. Yes. Somebody has raised a question. Please hand. Ah, uh, no, it's with a special name. I'll just put some messages. Okay. Yes. okay. <clears throat> By mistake, someone raised the hand. I think, uh, Doctor Faz, you can start. I think someone by mistake raised the hand. Okay. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, welcome back. Uh, to this uh, executive development program. This is day two. And uh, today uh, we'll be discussing on uh, NVMet. Primarily, we'll, we'll look at this, uh, uh, what is this NVMet tool and um, <clears throat> how, do, how do we use that in uh, for research and uh, other aspects. Before we go into tools, uh, I have phrased this uh, session, or rather the title of the session is uh, introduction to neighborhood scale climate studies. Okay, so I'll uh, I'll take you through some uh, basic literature that we should have uh, understanding on some concept that we should know before we actually jump into the tools. Okay, so let's get started. So uh, we'll have two sessions probably. Uh, first, we'll discuss about a neighborhood scale climate study bit of overview. Uh, what is this? Uh, what is that we are talking about, and uh, where NVMet can be used? Okay, so uh, maybe uh, to to put it in a simple word, uh, where we can use NVMet is is something that we'll discuss in the initial part, and then uh, we'll go into the the hands-on demonstration. Okay, so within the first part, uh, still uh, I would like to uh, highlight that. Um, in order to use a, some tool, for example, let's say in today's discussion, we'll be, discuss, we'll be talking about NVMet. So we need to have some background uh, knowledge or some background information about what, what is this tool about and where we can use it, how we can use it. Okay. So uh, this, the, the first part of the uh, presentation, which I'm going to make is on, on, the, on the first part. Okay, so where we can use this and how we can use this and what a prerequisite um, should be there uh, so that we can use this tool in an effective manner. Okay, so I have put this, this uh, um, these things for discussion. First is uh, we should have some understanding about what is uh, yeah, an urban scale research or a neighborhood scale research. The second part is what is the scale that we are talking about? Are we talking about city or are we talking about some clusters of building or what is the scale uh, in which uh, these kind of studies can be taken off? Okay. So later in the part, uh, later in the presentation, I'll explain how these things determine uh, what kind of data is required and how we can choose appropriate tools. Third part that we should all know is the basics of uh, heat energy balance. Okay. So all uh, I would say that. Uh, the uh, generating result results using NVMet or any other tool is uh, it's not very difficult. Maybe uh, you try once, twice, or thrice, four times. I think we all should be in a position to get results. That is not the intent of this course, also. Okay, so the the uh, probably the intent is just to to uh, give an overview of these are the tools that we can use, unless we have a fair understanding on the basics 
and uh, how we can use how we can apply for certain problems to study and so on and so forth uh, these two these results are these tools will be meaningless so uh, what are the understanding that is required uh, to to proceed further so i have put some information on this then there are different ways in which the models can be made and uh, different ways in which uh, the the approach can be done okay so even in the hands on session i'll show uh, how we can use a very simple uh, uh, data set to, to generate result. At the same time, how we can use, how we can bring more complex primary data, uh, data from field measurements and so on and so forth, and then carry out study. Okay. I'll also highlight some of the case studies uh, where uh, we have applied or where we can apply uh, these kind of tools for, uh, for meaningful, uh, meaningful output. <coughs> First thing, uh, first keyword that we should remember is uh, the scale that we are talking is on urban scale or neighborhood scale. Okay, so the factors that influences uh, these parameter can vary from very large uh, settings like uh, uh, the topography, latitude, longitude, and prevailing wind conditions to uh, some of the parameters that we understand we or we commonly use is on urban form, height of the buildings, shape of the building, uh, vegetation, uh, the placement of water bodies in neighborhood, or orientations of the street, and so on and so forth. Okay, so uh, uh, again, just to bring back, uh, uh, bring this topic uh, to, to be kept in mind, we are talking about slightly bigger scale, uh, slightly bigger um, environment, uh, not individual buildings. Okay, so we have, we are probably we have a, a street to be analyzed, we have a neighborhood to be analyzed, or we have a cluster of buildings to be analyzed. Okay, so that is the scale we are trying to uh, 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 understand through these tools. That's the first part. Okay, what is the um, uh, the parameters that goes into the urban form? The second parameter that we should remember is uh, the uh, theoretically. Uh, the, the 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 activities that we do at terrestrial level uh, uh, is uh, it, it has a limit okay so uh, uh, we call it as planetary, planetary boundary layer where all the activities that we do uh, that is the limit or that is the boundary uh, to which the influence can be felt and probably the the influence can be studied again this is a big uh, scale probably uh, maybe let's say we are talking about regional scale or we, we are talking about little extended city scale study. Uh, however, we are more interested in slightly uh, smaller scale, like for example, uh, technically we call it as the urban boundary layer or the urban canopy layer. Again, in, if you see this diagram, what is an urban boundary layer is, is a layer that maybe let, 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 let us assume that this is the entire city. Okay, a, an imaginary boundary layer uh, where all the activities of the city will have an influence can be studied. Okay, so that's urban boundary layer. And um, it can extend up to 10 times the height of the building from a uh, place. And uh, theoretically, that's how the urban boundary layer is assumed. Again, this is a little larger scale. Uh, probably uh, uh, the tool that we are uh, seeing or uh, going to see uh, may not be. Uh, uh, used, but similar studies can be uh, uh, can be done using GIS uh, uh, for, for urban boundary layer scale. We are interested in a second layer. For example, let's say if this is the uh, the uh, the diagram that you see here is in blown up section or blown up part of the uh, part of the city. You can see that we have buildings, we have some vegetation, we have some finishes, and so on and so forth. And this creates a boundary. Okay, this is this uh, this this is the second layer of boundary, which we call it as urban canopy layer. And uh, this is one of the scale which we can study, or probably uh, if, if if there are some problems, uh, there are some research that that mm, takes place at this scale, we can use NVMet for uh, for the scale. The the the, the Further, if you go deep further, and if you blow up or if you take up a closer look at the lookup of the section, 
uh, we have buildings and we have immediate surroundings okay so maybe 90 percent of the time architects are interested in doing some kind of studies at this scale okay again probably the height of the building shape of the building amount of vegetation proportion of open spaces how the walls and roofs and are treated how the floors are treated uh, the uh, streets are treated so on and so forth will have an impact on how the the microclimate of that uh, environment can be defined so this this though both these scales can be studied using uh, nvpath and uh, the, there are further details actually uh, um, maybe when we go into data set i'll explain how these understandings are required when we uh, when we uh, when we feed certain information climate information or weather information into the model to to get an appropriate uh, results okay so th this is about building on the other side you can see in the diagram we have three scales mentioned here one is called micro scale climate study or local scale climate study or meso scale climate study meso scale uh, scale climate study is something probably we can do using gis and QGIS and there are so many uh, uh, other tools available. Uh, we are interested, or rather, for, for today's discussion, uh, local scale level of problems or micro scale level of problems can be studied using uh, NVMet. And again, if you see further classification, when we say microclimate, what is the scale that we are talking about? Probably uh, a plot size of 10 by 10, uh, even if it is a facade, or maybe the the uh, the layout and uh, of about 50 meter by 50 meter or 100 meters by 100 meters, so on and so forth. Okay, and uh, uh, I think uh, I hope you all have downloaded uh, NVMet 5.5 version. Uh, trial version gives uh, a grade of about 50 meter by 50 meter by 25 or maybe 40. Okay, this is the scale that is available free for trial uh, for trial version. Okay, so maybe. Uh, the exercises or the the problems that you want to model and then study, uh, we should restrict to this 50 meter by 50 meter by 40 meter grid. Okay, so uh, all the more we are trying, we are fitting into uh, the, this category. And also probably if we have a full license version, we can do uh, a larger scale analysis uh, in, in the same tool as well. Okay, so this is again, uh, the scale uh, we should have an understanding on uh, so that we can use it appropriately. <clears throat> Third component that we should know is about the energy balance. What is that output that we are looking from uh, NVMet? Probably one of the output is about how much of heat is received by that particular uh, built environment, how much is emitted back. Okay, what is the energy balance that takes place? Okay, this is one thing that we should know. Okay, and probably we should all have an understanding on uh, what, what do you mean by uh, heat fluxes? What is convective heat, lat latent heat? Bit of not to de detailed uh, understanding, but at least we should know what is that we are talking about. Okay, so this is one conceptual understanding we should know. Second, uh, if for any uh, to balancing out heat, for example, let's say in in a building, what do we say uh, in order to uh, ventilate this building, or let's say if you if you uh, we, if uh, if this building has to be ventilated, or if this building has to be cooled, what do we do? We say let us increase the vent ventilation rate. Okay, let us open up the window, let there be airflow, and uh, as a result, there will be um, heat loss. Right. So in an urban context or in a uh, city level, uh, all the buildings that we see. These are actually heat receptors. It absorbs heat. Okay. So, what are the elements that can help in cooling down the urban environment? We should have an understanding of. Okay. One uh, one such component that that is often used, or that is the uh, one of the components that is used, is vegetation in the city and also the uh, water bodies in the city. Okay. So, when we say uh, we should have an understanding on what is the role of green in the city, what is the role of blue in the city. Uh, we should go slightly um, deeper. We should know what, what is the what is that we are talking about. Okay. Otherwise, generating result is not a big deal. 
okay uh, i'm telling you maybe at the end of the session uh, maybe 60% of you should be in a position to generate results that's not in uh, that's not a big deal actually we should have an understanding on how how much of water body should be kept what is the size of the water bodies should be kept so that we get an effective results similarly how much of water uh, green should be kept what what is the proportion of green and blue ratio that, that should be kept so that we can balance out the heat so this understanding conceptual understanding theoretical understanding is required uh, before we actually jump into the tools okay okay fine so where do we apply this like i said in the beginning uh, of the slides maybe we can apply this to study the entire city or like i said we'll be interested in studying more on canopy layer uh, of study for example let's say if you introduce a water body in uh, a city okay so for example this is uh, taken from literature you can see that this is the surface temperature during daytime there's a sharp dip in, uh, in in the surface temperature because of the water body present there and uh, it, it goes on okay so uh, this is the surface temperature for the entire day and um, uh, you can see the air temperature remains more or less same during the night time the surface temperature and air temperature looks more or less same and there's a sharp increase in temperature uh, where we have water bodies okay so uh, i'm not going into deep and dis to discuss what is the phenomenon that is happening so on and so forth what i'm trying to hint is we should know this only then we'll be able to generate meaningful results otherwise uh, um, the the will be able to generate result but it, it may not be of use uh, effectively okay so uh, the some of the common terminologies probably that we should uh, pick up uh, as we move from building to little bit urban scale um, phenomena maybe let's say uh, maybe those who are there in, from the planning background they they must be aware ndvi uh, the building coverage ratio uh, relative height and so on and so forth albedo values canyon effect sky view factor these are some of the concepts or the terminologies that we should have a clear understanding on so that we can apply this in uh, while, gen while generating the models or when while generating the iteration and so on and so forth okay without these the theoretical understanding without these sciences uh, it will be difficult to um, proceed further okay so this is the third part of the uh, discussion that i thought we should bring in um, here fourth point that we should remember is uh, one of the important element that is required for simulation is data we should have data set in hand so there are different ways in which data can be collected okay so uh, maybe let's say if we are looking at a larger scale uh, assessment maybe remote sensing data can be used and uh, i'll also show today um, how we can use open street map for preparing uh, base maps and how do we proceed further from there okay so uh, maybe if the scale of assessment is uh, big we can use uh, remote sensing data uh, for this otherwise primarily what happens is uh, all these study we depend on weather files okay uh, local weather files or we have some instruments like testo devices for measuring temperature humidity air velocity so on and so forth uh, what happens is we go to site and then collect information or data for a week or a month or so on and so forth so how do we use that one week's data in for simulation how do we use one month's data for simulation uh, is something that we should know one uh, there are there are two three ways in which this uh, assessment can be done one we use weather file directly and then generate results or we use uh, let's say one week information you have taken one week data you have taken from a specific site and you want result specifically for that particular one week based on the primary data set that you have so we can do that um, that is second way of doing it third way of doing it is we are interested in understanding the overall picture of how the the setting is and 
uh, what kind of understanding that we can draw uh, very very broadly okay so without going into much detail let's say for example let's say if i have a building of this nature what is the impact this is going to create uh, where, do, where do we have punctures and so on and so forth without going into much detail so i i need one conceptual uh, decision to make uh, based on this result so uh, depending on the problem that we have in hand uh, we can go into uh, details okay so uh, some may be conceptual maybe some some of the output can be generated very specifically okay and uh, again uh, using weather data also we can uh, have a generic uh, output uh, for uh, any results okay so this is again one of the important components that we should uh, keep in mind maybe uh, again i'll come back to this when we uh, go, go to hands on uh, demonstration we can see that how these uh, elements or data play a major role in deciding what kind of output or what kind of results that we will get okay so that's the theory part okay so uh, let us quickly refresh first is we should know uh, we are talking about little uh, larger scale uh, urban or neighborhood scale um, issues number two we should know a uh, little bit of the scaling okay uh, both in terms of climate study and also in terms of built up environment okay are we talking are we talking about street or are we talking about neighborhood or and so on and so forth and again local uh, it's it's about local climate or meso scale study or micro scale study that we should have an understanding of third component we should have fair understanding on what is energy balance what happens to heat that we receive how it is dissipated or how it is absorbed what happens to the vegetation how uh, vegetation interact with um, uh, vegetation interact with the build form how water bodies interact with build form one component that i have not written in this slide is air movement also okay so how air movement can help in all these uh, uh, how we can moderate or what happens to uh, air movement uh, in in, a, uh, in an environment so on and so forth the fourth component that we should know is about the data set what kind of data that that we have in hand and how do we use it um, uh, effectively okay so uh, let us say if we have we should have fair understanding okay without this i don't think we'll be able to generate any meaningful result okay that's that's point this point number one now let us see i'll just very quickly take you through uh, some of the case studies where um uh, what kind of studies can be done so that we will will uh, will look at the tool from that perspective okay so first scale for example let's say this is a top down approach uh, what is the impact of green and blue infrastructure at a city scale okay normally what happens is we uh, we we dedicate zones different zones and then we we'll say that okay uh, we have a patch of green here a blue here and so on and so forth and we have broad master plan okay and uh, it's not good enough to just zone it okay we can do little bit uh, micro uh, not i won't say micro look let's say uh, local uh, climate zone approach where um, uh, uh, where specific uh, planning or urban interventions can be thought of at a, at a this scale okay so maybe those who are from the planning background they must have done these kind of exercises like to understand what is the green patch what is the blue, blue patch available and how the uh, the heating up of the city uh, takes place and uh, we superimpose that on topography population density air uh, air and wind uh, to to get a map to to get something called a thermal load map okay so these are actually thermally stressed zones in the city where heat is getting trapped okay which includes the temperature profile building profile uh, the temperature uh, the uh, the air temperature uh, this is surface temperature this is air temperature topography population density so on and so forth on the other side technically these are uh, these are what taken from literature uh, in through literature they call it as dynamic potentials so the wind can help in cooling down the city vegetation can help in cooling down the city water bodies can help in cooling down the city so how do we make 
a balance between these two, this kind of assessment can be done at a macro or, or let's say local climate zone scale. This is an example, a very precise example, probably this can give an idea on how uh, the, the tool can be effectively used. Uh, this is a master plan, proposed master plan of Maravati. You can see this is the boundary line and this is Vijayawada city. And uh, what you see here is, is all the uh, blue patches and green patches of the master plan, proposed master plan. Now the idea is whether, for, for example, let's say without going into much detail, uh, Vijayawada has uh, uh, the UHI of about uh, seven degrees Celsius and about let's say five to seven degree plus five to seven degrees Celsius from, from this rural setting. Now, uh, what do you mean by that? And an average, let's say, the temperature here in Vijayawada is, let's say, about 36, 38 degrees Celsius. Um, without any buildings or without any uh, structure, if we compare uh, the, the city with, with this area, we should have about 30, 32 degrees Celsius. Oh, okay, there's a difference of, of about uh, five to seven degrees Celsius. Those five to seven degrees Celsius are actually UHIs. Uh, the heat accumulation in, in the city. And uh, these, like I said, theoretically, the blue patches and green patches are supposed to moderate those increase in temperature, uh, those increase in temperature, okay? So the, I, the, the question here asked uh, is whether the blue patches and green patches that is proposed here can actually help in reducing this seven, uh, increase in seven degrees Celsius also. Okay, so this kind of assessment can also be done uh, uh, using um, uh, simulation tools. Uh, here I've used GIS, but uh, I'll, I'll show you some of the results that, that is done using environment as well. So this is another scale of study that can be done. And probably let's say if somebody is interested in studying uh, the impact of this uh, uh, park on immediate surrounding. So the environment tool can definitely be used to, to study what is the impact of this particular uh, water uh, green patch or to, to study a canal, what is the impact of that canal on the immediate surrounding, so on and so forth. This other, other scale can be, maybe let's say if you have a neighborhood scale and you have parks or uh, water bodies and so on and so forth, if you want to quantify what is the impact of these um, green and blue on built structure, this also can be studied. Again, like I said, we need more details, okay? So we should have good understanding of what is the building physics and urban physics also, okay? Only then we'll be able to generate uh, appropriate results. Or we can apply this for a street, let's say somebody is interested in studying one street and they want to uh, uh, come up with, let's say, uh, do an assessment of outdoor thermal comfort in a street. So how do you do that and what kind of assessment, uh, what kind of data set is required and what kind of profiles that we have, uh, this kind of assessment can also be done using environment. Okay, and of course, uh, uh, other forms of study, uh, how, how it impacts the energy consumption can also be studied. Uh, I think I'll just uh, skip this without uh, discussing further. <clears throat> Of course, uh, uh, we can also, let's say you're, you're designing a school and you have some green patches or uh, open, open area in a school environment or any campuses, and you want to quantify how these open space influence the, uh, the building, okay? In, in terms of performance and what is the contribution of green uh, to balance out the heat, all that can be experimented here. Okay, so this is the concluding uh, slide of the first Part. Okay. What is the what is the takeaway? What is the uh, what are the uh, basic thing that we should keep in mind? There are different scales of study that can be done. Okay. We can think of cluster of building for assessment, or we can think of a street for assessment, or we can think of a neighborhood for an assessment, or we can uh, think of a city also for an assessment. Okay. This is one thing. Second thing is. The interventions or the solution for that, uh, uh, the, 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 the problem that I have just defined is also uh, different, okay? The city will require a different 
solution or intervention or uh, neighborhood requires a different ways of approaching it okay street requires a different uh, approach and of course cluster of buildings require different approach so this uh, scale of study the variables change in variables all that we should have fair understanding uh, in order to get a meaningful output the second part is we should know a little bit of uh, physics okay uh, the building physics and urban physics especially to understand what happens to the heat and how green blue and ventilation play a role in um, in a neighborhood level context okay third thing is data set okay so it, again it can be uh, like a, like i was trying to explain or we can have a range of data set it can be purely weather file or it can be purely uh, primary data or combination of all this uh, is all possible okay so all this i'm trying to put this under climate sensitive planning and design approach okay so it can be from uh, local climate zone to micro uh, level study and also we should remember that uh, these are actually multidisciplinary approach okay so that's why uh, some of the concepts may not be uh, we may not have seen also right we may not have heard of so uh, uh, the in order to go further in order to explore in deep we have to have a multidisciplinary approach uh, only then we'll have a comprehensive understanding on that okay i i have one slide uh, just maybe if somebody is interested uh, we made one uh, detailed course on nptel plus okay so it's a free course you were um, i have just summarized all this topic in half an hour time uh, but there is a course on environment um, which you can look for this is about uh, three to four hours of discussion on urban scale climate zone what is urban canopy model what are different types of urban canopy models what is urban ventilation what are the variables of urban ventilation uh, what is albedo and how uh, plays a major role in all these aspects urban morphology defining uh, urban morphology and uh, the concepts of energy balance so on and so forth okay so my suggestion will be those who are studying or those who are uh, those who are into this subject probably we should dwell further and so that we have a comprehensive understanding of this uh, theoretical uh, concepts okay only then we'll be able to uh, use these tools for uh, more effective manner okay so now we'll just pass for a couple of minutes and then we'll go into the second section uh, that is on hands on demonstration uh, and if meanwhile if somebody has any questions or any uh, anything to ask we can do that for a couple of minutes and then we can go ahead with the second part it's a break for 2 minutes Yes. Thank you, Dr. Faiz. It was really, really, really nice to hear you. Uh, just two, one or two questions. One, I was uh, wanting to know if in NVMET we can also uh, model uh, heat, which, you know, the air conditioning heat or the anthropogenic heat from air conditioning as well as vehicles. Yes, can yes. that be integrated in NVMET? Yes, 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 of course. Yeah, there is a separate... Uh, um, module or a separate tab on how do we bring in the uh, anthropogenic heat in component into the model uh, maybe i'll uh, i'll show it when when we do a demonstration great. yes we can do it absolutely we can do it great great and uh, another thing was that you said that at city level you've been using gis as a tool so like um, are you also using some plugin you know to do energy modeling with gis uh, uh, yeah uh, there are two ways. Uh, I, actually, if you see uh, Saga, uh, Saga uh, models, there are inbuilt uh, assessments. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, I'm familiar with JS, so I use uh, uh, I don't use any plugin. Uh, mm -hmm. I use JS for the results, uh, for generating results and assessment. But if you if if let's say if we are not familiar with JS and we want only results, let's say. Uh, we want only uh, heat uh, or let's say LSD, line yes. surface temperature for this. Yes. And I don't want to go into the intricacies of the uh, how to the, the process. Mm -hmm. Let's say simple four or five clicks 
I should be in a position to generate LST for a city or uh, study area. Uh, you can use Sada JS. Okay. okay. So it has all, uh, I think about 30 or 40 uh, modules, uh, ready to use modules. Modules in the sense, uh, I'm not using the word correct. It's a tool, 20, 20, 30 tools ready to use uh, just few clicks and we should be in a position to generate results without let, let's say we don't have a uh, deep understanding of ArcGIS still we can use uh, and generate results okay you can try Saga. Saga. okay okay so even with change of suppose adding water body or vegetation it would be able to predict we are saying it would be able to do the modeling so like in Envimet, here also you are saying we could by integration of you know additional vegetation or yeah, water yeah, bodies. Yeah, we can do yeah, we can do okay. at city uh, level. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is are there any tools available in open source like QGI? Yeah, Saga is open source. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, one more question is in chat box. Okay. Okay, so if you are analyzing microclimate of a particular context with respect to urban heat mitigation, what parameters? Um, like I said, um, the parameters are all, maybe I'll just go back to the slide. All this will come into picture. Okay, so what, what is the uh, canyon that we are talking about? What is the aspect ratio that we are talking about? Uh, what is the ventilation rate, uh, how the materials are finished, okay, what is the geometry like, it is sparse or cluttered or um, so on and so forth, and do we have uh, vegetation, do we have water bodies, uh, uh, and uh, how far and how close, what is the size, shape, all this will uh, play a role, okay. Um, Basically, these are required geometry, physical geometry, okay, material treatment, and uh, the uh, what, what is the uh, green and blue patches and ventilation. Primarily, if you very broadly, if you say four parameters will play a major role in this. And please look into this course, uh, you will get more insight on uh, each of it, uh, each, each of the topic that I have uh, written here. Uh, there's extensive discussion on this and also that and uh, there, there are a lot of books also available now and a lot of work has been done in this area so you can also find that uh, but i would say these are the four elements that will have an impact major impact on this Okay, so should we proceed further? Yeah, so let us uh, go ahead. Uh, the second part, uh, roughly, let's say, I'll try to keep it within this time or maybe much lesser than that. Uh, uh, what is NVMet and what it can do? And what is it, uh, what are the different tools available? How it works? Uh, let us have uh, very briefly, uh, some discussion on this, and then uh, let's go to the tool. Uh, this is the third time I'm doing this exercise, or rather, I'm introducing NFIMET uh, every year to uh, like uh, annual event. 2020, I did this. 2021, I did this. Uh, this I think there's a huge demand for this. Uh, uh, this or, or let, rather uh, how this can be used for various purposes. 2022 also I did uh, sometime, but I did not have the recordings to upload in public domain. And this is 2023. Um, why I'm saying this, why we have to record again and again is it is evolving, okay? This, the tool that uh, we will be discussing today is just one month old, uh, meaning 
uh, there's not a huge change. 90% of the interface remains same and so on and so forth. But there's some change in it, okay? Uh, the interface, some uh, factors, some parameters changes, some input uh, indicators or some input parameters changes, so on and so forth, okay? So the latest version that we are trying to see today is uh, is released just one month back, okay? And they claim that uh, NVMet can be used to calculate microclimate of a <coughs> uh, city down to a square kilometer, square meters, hmm? not square kilometers. Okay, so that that is the uh, that, that that is the tool that we we are trying to explore. Okay, so there are two things. Uh, one, I think probably everyone must have gone into www.nvmet.com. Okay, so which is a commercial web, uh, uh, web page where you will get uh, the tools about the tools uh, and what is the pricing, so on and so forth. There is one more website, it's called www.nvmet.info, where we have technical information about the tool. Okay. So if you are going to use this tool for further or later in your studies and if you want to uh, apply this in your research and so on and so forth, I think you should go into uh, this website and see what are the, uh, the theoretical input or the theoretical information that is available, some sample data, uh, all other uh, intricacies of the tool, you can find it on this particular page. Okay, so I have listed the most important part uh, so that we can have an, some discussion on uh, what is it. So first tool, if you go there, of course this you could you could have uh, you, you you must have got the same thing in the uh, .com website as well. Okay, so it's all about downloads. What are different formats uh, available, so on and so forth. Okay, so this is generic one. If you go to here in um, dot .info, uh, we have <coughs> uh, NVMet 5.5, and we also have archives of N NVMet 4.5, uh, NVMet 5, and so on and so forth. And we also have some example files as well from where we can download, and then you can view, we can test it and use it. Okay, so so uh, this probably is is not or uh, this is not available in the other website. So please make a note of this. Third thing that we should know, or probably um, we should explore is how this model work, okay? So in the initial part, I said, we should know a little bit of building physics, urban physics, so on and so forth, right? But how this building physics, urban physics is translated into model, that also we should have some understanding, okay? So see, at the end of the day, it's all models uh, bound to have errors. It's not going to be as uh, uh, realistic as um, uh, we think. Okay, there will be errors. There will be um, there will be huge errors also. We have seen uh, in results where, where it will not match with reality, so on and so forth. All this is all possible because because these are models which is evolving and it will it will keep on evolving. But we should, if you know a little bit of how these translation has happened and uh, what are the assumptions they have made. Um, again, we need a little bit of uh, exposure on this as well, uh, uh, so that um, we are certain of uh, what is that we are, exp uh, let's say if we generate results, we should be in a position to explain in what context this result is valid, okay? It's not uh, realistic, definitely it is not realistic, okay? So there's some assumptions, there's some um, normalization has happened. So what is that? All that is required, especially those who are doing PhD or those who are applying um, uh, this in your PhD research. Uh, I think you should definitely go into these modules and uh, read and understand how this model works. Okay. Uh, otherwise, there will be a lot of issues uh, in generalizing and uh, so on and so forth. <coughs> okay. Third, of course, we have a library as well uh, where we can download uh, information. Uh, there are certain models as well, uh, which we can uh, download and use it. 
the major part is on application side okay so application has these uh, tools actually um, this is similar to gis gis also has different tools for example let's say it has a different to uh, a tool for data management itself different tools for 3d making different tool for 2d drawings so on and so forth right so like this uh, this has uh, even envimet has got um, different tools for example there's a common tool this is the first tool that we should open it's called headquarters and where we have all these sub tools okay so we'll be going through all all of this uh, in uh, some time from now but let us first see what are these tools okay so the first uh, you can say mon there's a, a tool called mon uh, which helps in bringing gis data or real time uh, data into envimet model and from there we can do the uh, we can have the base map and then do the uh, further assessment okay so i would say this is little higher version, higher level uh, of understanding is required so uh, um, what i thought is i'll introduce the tool in two ways okay one is the basic part the second one is the uh, higher end part okay both we, i'll do that uh, um, i'll just highlight which is higher end or which is which requires little higher understanding which uh, the second part which requires very basic understanding okay so i would put this in higher order okay we need little more understanding about uh, how gis work what is uh, geo referencing what is an open source data, uh, open street map how how to read or how to extract information from open street map okay so we need little uh, more understanding than just uh, clicking okay so so uh, i'll show some uh, hands on on this as well we have something called yeah envimet core this is the core tool where we have uh, simulation actually takes place okay so for example let's say in a uh, <clears throat> we have a model let's say we have built a 3d model okay and we have to uh, we have to assign certain uh, conditions for example i want this model to be simulated or this environment to be simulated for june 21st from 9 am to 12 pm okay this is the condition that we have to give third one is of course we need a uh, platform where simulation takes place and we have uh, results where we can do a visualization part okay so we have a model making place this is called space where we do models where we prepare the uh, the 2d or 3d uh, models for uh, simulation uh, we have envimet core we do where we do the simulation hmm, actual simulation part and we have something called uh, leonardo where we do the visualization of results okay so these are three basic thing that is required for running uh, envimet model or any envimet simulation there are other things like something called biomet where for example let's say if you want to do a specific assessment let's say pmv pet uh, set uh, utci all this assessment can also be done using this particular tool okay what is pet what is utci what is uh, um, uh, uh, let's say set if you don't know i think we should go back learn that and come here okay just by clicking four buttons uh, we'll be able to generate results okay like i said it's not very difficult to actually it's not very difficult to at all uh, we can run it in no time only thing is we need to have a fair understanding of how do we use it okay so bio biomet i would also put this in uh, the second category okay mont also will put in second category okay in addition to that we also have uh, some certain other tools uh, of which basic thing that we should everybody or every model uh, we should make sure that we do it is the management of files okay this is the basic requirement in envimet tool uh, because all the outputs that it generates or the all the input that uh, that it generates all has to be in one folder only then it can work in a um uh, holistic manner okay so this becomes very very 
crucial most of the time we have issues only here whatever i have seen so far many times they say that i don't see results i don't know where is the inbox or inox or the building file that i made i don't know where is the um, simulation files and made okay so this is the basic requirement that has that we should have fair understanding of all other things that is mentioned here okay uh, i would say this uh, database manager and this together i'll put it as basic all other things that we see here it's a little higher version or higher order uh, understanding is required for example let's say in albero we can do modeling of trees okay uh, let's say uh, you uh, you have a you have studied a tree and you you know what is the uh, leaf area index of the tree and you have uh, uh, taken an instrument and then uh, calculated it and then you want to replicate the tree as such as realistic as uh, uh, as possible can we do that we, there is a possibility of modeling tree as well okay i'll show you some de demo um, but i would say this are little higher order second one is there's something called force manager uh, this is also required in basic and also in advanced in basic like i said um, maybe let's say if i put it in a very very simple manner we need a model okay we need a, a building model or uh, a context model okay the uh, we call it here in um, uh, in in uh, envimet it is called uh, um, uh, inx dot inx okay this is one file that is required second file that is required is simulation conditions when the simulation has to be done okay what is the condition like like i said 21st june so on so year and uh, timing from 9 to 10 okay this is called simax file okay so inx file simax file these two are required okay so with these two we we generate a simulation and it it uh, uh, generates the results that can be visualized in uh, there's a specific specific tool for visualization part apart from that uh, here we have to give a settings here okay so this can be a basic where we just we don't have to alter much we just have to say this latitude and longitude let us run the simulation or let's say you have uh, primary data collected for a week time or month month time so on and so forth okay let's say from 1 to 12 months you have uh, for third month you have collected primary data and you want to integrate that with the overall 12 months data okay so all that is possible here in postman I'll, I'll show you uh, a demo as well okay so uh, these are the uh, tools uh, that we will see and uh, uh, with, with these tools we'll be in a position to model simulate and see results okay and uh, if you are lucky and uh, if you are um, uh, maybe let's say maybe not in one go maybe if you just watch this video for a couple of times not more than that you will be able to generate results like this okay so what what does it indicate we have buildings okay we have temperature profiles on plotted on the uh, study area we also have uh, the wind directions indicated so on and so forth or we want to create contours of winds contours of temperature profile in in the uh, in the study area all that can be done okay and I, uh, like again i'm telling you uh, this is not a very difficult uh, tool only thing is we need to have an understanding very thorough understanding on the basics otherwise uh, I, i'm telling you with two uh, two rounds of sitting on this tutorial you will be able to generate much better results than what i'm showing now okay so with that caution or without a uh, note let's go on to the tool If you have not downloaded the tool, it's fine, no issues. Uh, you can just uh, see what how things work, and then uh, you can try on your own. Let's see. Okay, first thing, let me go to the tool. Uh, 
once you have downloaded uh, you you will get a tab like this okay so i have other versions as well so um, you can see that so we are looking at nvmatic 5 okay if you click here there are so many tabs you just open headquarters okay nvmatic headquarters this is the, the probably all must have installed or if you're going to install this is what you will be getting it so let's click on headquarters <clears throat> okay so we have this uh, tool here i'll just minimize it so that you don't get confused yeah uh, hello sir yes uh, so first when we have clicked it, it it is asking for the workspace so it's asking for project name description yes yes, so yes. folder name yeah so please guide yes. us from there itself yeah yeah, yeah. okay okay so uh, if you click on this probably you will get a tab of this something like this okay so otherwise also if you go here let's say uh, if you are seeing this probably you will you will get to see this this image that will ask you for what is the workspace where the information has to be saved okay like i said uh, this is the uh, crux where not crux i would say this is where we make mistakes okay so uh, please make sure that the all the files are saved in the same folder um, where where you want it to be okay by default it will it will get saved in c drive okay so but if you are changing it to some d r e drive uh, please make sure that you 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 assign that particular folder otherwise we'll have issues uh, in every step okay it will say the file is not available uh, you you are we are not seeing the input file so on and so forth okay so first thing go to this tab okay change workspace and wherever you want to assign or wherever you want to uh, save this uh, uh, wherever you want to keep the uh, database uh, click that and assign it okay so that is the first thing that you should do yeah okay so let us assume that you have assigned uh, the workspace what is the next step that should be done okay so let us assume maybe after that if you are getting this tab come to there are three three four tabs here you can see and we met we have some, something called data setting we have something called system and help okay so i'm clicking on data and settings go to project workspace okay i think you will have empty space here uh, we'll be creating some projects now how do we create projects click on create project okay so once you click on create project this folder has come here okay L let us change the name uh, let's say <coughs> edp file 2 okay. so if you have some description you can write that okay you can see where this project is getting saved okay so maybe i'll just put this also as trial and then say click you can see here create do you want to create a project folder trial for your project okay so on and so forth yes yeah so please do this this is essential all the um, all the files has to be kept in the same folder whatever base file that we are trying to create whatever other data sets that we are trying to create all has to be there in the same folder only then uh, we'll get results otherwise we'll have some error in uh, while doing it okay so if you are done with that click done 
and you can see we have this tab <coughs> back again. Like I said, this is the first tab uh, mode, but we'll come back to this later. Uh, just remember that this is this tool is used for, let's say if you have GAS data set in hand, and if you want to extract or if you want to take a data set directly from there. Okay, or let's say if you, uh, we have open street maps, and if you want to take open street maps directly into NVMet, uh, that can also be done uh, using Mount. Okay, I'll show you a demo a little later, but let us do the basic first, basic, basic things first. Okay, no, sorry. <clears throat> this also we'll discuss as little uh, higher version, not now. Okay. Second tab, we have something called space. Okay, click on space. The space is where we will do the modeling part. Click on this. Okay, so we have this uh, interface. Okay, this is where we are going to model the uh, buildings. Okay, uh, please make sure that the uh, your wherever you have saved the project or the the uh, link that you have created is visible here or not. Okay, so this is an another uh, just for cross checking whether whether the uh, the file has been assigned to that particular folder or not. Okay, so once we come to this phase, we have some tabs here. Uh, let, let us come to this this part, modeling part, a little later. Let's go to first. Uh, we have here something called start, edit, view, digitize, so on and so forth. Okay, help. In start, we have something called uh, create area or open area, let's say if you have already created, we can open here. We don't have any created area. So what we do is we'll just go here and create new area. Click on this, okay, and you, you get a tab like this. Now, let us assign, uh, assign the location. Okay, assign the closest city that uh, that you can find. Set location. Okay, and uh, this thing you don't have to change. But if you have some specific light long information where the model has been made, uh, I think for basic, you don't change all this. Okay, just assign the location. Fair enough. Okay, in when we come back uh, on the little higher version, that time I'll tell you. Uh, how this can be changed and where uh, what changes can be done and so on. First part. Second, if you go to the model, uh, that tab was model location. The second tab was is uh, model geometry. Okay. By default, uh, in the trial version, we get only 50, 50, 25 grades. Okay. X 50, Y 50, height 25 only. Okay. So please remember, this is a three-dimensional modeling, and uh, we have a. Uh, let us assume that if it is a 50, 50, 25 in meters, this 50 meters, 50 meters, and 25 meters in height. That is the volume we have in free version for assessment. Okay, so uh, 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 keep keep it at that. We, we if you have uh, if you keep higher versions or if you increase the grades, uh, you will get. Uh, errors. In full version, there is no limit on the sizing of the grid. Uh, we can have as many as height as possible. Okay, uh, th that is one thing that we should remember. It. Also, if you see here, there is a statement here. It says mod maximum model size is 50, 50, 40 in NVMet light. We are what we are using is trial version, light version. Uh, the maximum model or maximum assessment it can do is 50, 50, 40. Okay. Uh, please don't keep 40 here. That is not going to work. I'll tell you why. 
we need some space for simulation okay even if you have um, maybe i'll go back here let's say even if you have full space let's say this is the grid that we have please don't make models like this don't cover the entire uh, model area okay leave at least 5% on all side okay and then make your models here in this area uh, so that we get a effective results okay otherwise sometimes what will happen is uh, it does not have any boundary conditions here. if you if you make as close uh, to the uh, overall site area we'll have issues in simulation we'll, we'll get errors okay ideally what we should do is uh, if you if this is these uh, the plot size we have grid size we have leave space and then make model here okay at least uh, some five grids or so you make models here the other one is is a three dimensional model okay again please don't make 40 meter model in three grids okay so maximum you can make is about 25 meters of course you can make 40 also it will run but there will be errors uh, in the results so ideally what you should do is you should make a model uh, since we are, we are all using trial version and like uh, whatever is freely available uh, so in order to get a correct results these are something that you should keep in mind okay so don't make uh, buildings of 40 meter height in a 40 meter total grid of course if let's say if you have full version where there is no limit you you, you can have uh, you can make uh, buildings of uh, the the height that you want but here in this case, uh, it is suggested that you don't make uh, full grades. Hmm? Keep it, uh, keep it to twenty-five and so. And the second one is what you see here is each grid is two meter, two meter grid. One, which means if you draw one grid, it means two meter with two meter you're drawing. It. Okay, you can keep it to one, one meter by one meter if you have a very small area to draw. Or if you have a little larger area, so uh, you can increase this uh, grid size. Okay, so depending on uh, the <coughs> uh, depending on the study area that you take, you please make a, a, a rough assessment and see what is the length and width of the study area that you have. Accordingly, you make these two decisions. Okay, this is very very uh, important decision because once you move further, will not will not be positioned to uh, change this okay so this is one thing that you should keep in mind all other things i'm not uh, talking anything i'm just leaving it as it, as it is this is good enough uh, to run or generate results okay in a, in a basic level then we have something called georeferencing again i'll not touch now um, uh, if if you have some data set in hand where you know lat long information that can also be fitted here and uh, extract okay Yes, Prakash. Uh, sir, uh, what is telescoping factor and what is the height of telescoping factor? Yeah, uh, again, it is important is, for me. That's why I am as asking. Yeah, but this is again, like I said, um, you can keep it up about five percent or so, uh, so that we have space for modeling. Okay, so this is the total model size that we have. Okay, so if you make buildings exactly to the entire model size that we have, it will be an issue for us. Issue in the sense the model will have errors. So what it does is, if you say five percent or ten percent tele, uh, 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 telescopic view, it will scale down your model by that level. Okay, it will generate one imaginary boundary around that particular model. Okay, so I think in the beginning level, it's not required. You don't have to worry because uh, the, the, if, your, if your model size is smaller than what is uh, available uh, in, in the, uh, sorry, one second. Yeah. Uh, if, you are, if your model is within this 50, 50, 40, okay. So let's say if you are modeling 40, 40, 25, or uh, 35, 35, or 35, 40, and uh, 25, you don't have to change anything. 
okay but if you are there's no way you want to have only 50 50 40 then you given um, uh, you you ask the model to assume that an imaginary 5% of space or 10% of the space to be created around the model okay but i think don't do it now you just follow okay. this it will, it will help the simulation uh, yes it will help the simulation if you if you uh, for simulation we need some environment okay so if you have if you are utilizing the entire grid uh, we will get errors we need some buffer space around the models to uh, in order in order for the model to interact or generate results in those spaces also okay sir. it will help if we don't help. if if we don't give the uh, uh, telescoping factor in normal model so mm -hmm. it will affect or not it no will it will not affect, affect pro provided you have your model size is within this or less not within this lesser than this okay if your model size is within 50 50 40 you don't have to change but by no means you have to have 50 50 40 only then you go for uh adding let's say five percent of extra space uh in the model okay, okay sometimes okay. you may get error for this also i don't i don't know we have to run and check uh if you make 50 50 40 and then give five percent of a telescopic factor again you, we, there may be error in the free version yes okay. this one more question yes uh <laughs> Yes, I have seen few consultants using, you know, free version, um, mm. you know, to downscale, let's say, a street, like which is two kilometer by two kilometer space neighborhood, and they have downscaled and used the model. Right. Is that right? right. Or it, uh, that's how model works. We, are, in fact, we are we are doing it here also. The scaling that we are uh, making to, or uh, let's say, grid size two is also we are scaling it by half of it. Mm -hmm. So it's fine. It's fine to scale fine. down. Okay. It, it's fine to scale down. Uh, the the model will work uh, as it is. See, uh, in a very but crude uh, manner or in a very simplified manner. Are there any you know thumb rules that you know if you scale down like because we have fifty meter by fifty meter. I mean, I can't make the entire city for sure. Uh, so you know, is are there any thumb rules that you should not have you know scale down beyond this? Uh, length and width. You know, uh, okay, I'll, I'll answer this in a, uh, in a different way. Let's say you have, okay, maybe I have an image, I guess. Okay, let's say this is our, this is SPAV campus. Okay, here, let's say when you're doing model, if you're making a model like this, this is one building. Okay, this is another building, or let's say this entire thing as one building. Okay, first question is whether this kind of scaling is good enough for me for the, the for the question that I have asked, uh, um, no, I'm not phrasing it rightly. Uh, what I mean to say is, I got the point, but hmm. yeah, let's say for example, you have uh, so many buildings here. If you club everything here and if you make this as one building, is it going to answer your question? If even if you club all this building, if, 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 uh, your question remains same, or the the results which is is going to generate is going to be same. It's not going to have a major impact on that then it is fine. However, if your model or you, your, the, the question that you are trying to ask requires a model like this, okay, it requires a model like this, then I think the scaling has to be uh, decided by you, okay, individually we have to decide like this. Whether I can go for a coarse model, uh, the result is going to be uh, this, this fine, the, the result, whatever results that I'm going to get is fine. Or we need a fine model, only then I'll get a specific result. Okay, that has to be uh, decided by the researcher. Okay, that's that's how I would see sure. it. Thanks. Sure, thanks. Okay, so we were there. 
in creating area. So let's go back. Okay, so I'm just selecting the location. In the model, I'm not changing anything. I, I leave it as two meter, two meter, two meter grid. Okay, so when I draw one grid, it is equal to two meters, two meters, and height, two meters. Okay, all other things, I'm not touching anything right now. Uh, I'll just leave it default. Okay, uh, anyway, these things we will change in, in the model uh, as we proceed. Okay, so let's say, uh, create new empty area. So now we got an uh, working space now. <clears throat> so now, uh, if you see here, okay, this is how do we create area. The second one is, let us say we have edit, uh, we have digitize. Okay, so um, both I'll explain. Well, let us first do uh, the direct model here itself. For now, what I'm saying is, let us assume that we have one uh, model. <coughs> Let's say we, we just have one uh, building, something like this. Okay, and we have some road here and some vegetation here. Okay, that's the model that we are trying to make here. Fine. Let's go. And if you see here, we have some tabs here, with something called building, vegetation, temp, soil properties, single wall, okay, and receptors and so on and so forth. Click on buildings. Okay, so if you go down here, uh, we have something called add, remove, action, so on and so forth. Uh, <coughs> uh, if you scroll down, it says uh, edit the building geometry top of the building element is 5 meter. This is going to be the height of the building. Let us say total height of the building is about 10 meters. Okay. Bottom height, I'll tell you what is bottom height. For now, let us keep only 10 meters. We have a building which is of 10 meters in height. And it is also asking, okay, so let's go here. We have something called display and edit option where we are, uh, we have said we'll add buildings. So I've clicked add add button otherwise we can remove also so let's say add i go to next tab and i say what is the height of the building i'm just saying 10 meters is the height of the building okay and now it is also saying uh, assign materials okay so it says uh, wall material what is the wall material okay let's say uh, default width is given uh, some material has been given. Let's say it's concrete wall. <coughs> what is the uh, finish of the roof? You can assign the uh, roof material. Okay, we have only two components. One which defines the uh, wall material. The other one which defines the roof material. Okay, only two components. Okay, we'll come back to this in a detailed uh, part where we can say, how do we create our own materials? How, what is What do you mean by concrete wall? We are not interested in, uh, uh, it, it will generate result. Whatever material, if you apply, it will generate result. But we should know what is the thickness of the wall? Uh, what is the uh, uh, the other properties, uh, material properties of the uh, wall, has wall or roof, whatever thing we are trying to do. Where do we get that? And how do we know that? Uh, I'll, I'll tell you in the, the later part. For now, let us say we are selecting one material for the wall and one material for the roof. That's all. Okay. Now let's go here again. Display add. I'm just going to draw this. Okay, so we have drawn this. You click here, this is switch to 3D. Okay, so this is our work environment and we have one building which is made like this. 
okay so uh, press control for um, panning or moving across okay this is the first option <clears throat> okay switch to uh, if you click here again uh, it's 3d or if you click back it will be 2d again okay now we have uh, we have uh, we have a building now we have another form of building which is you can see here it's called building nr okay or oh, no not that let's say you come here <coughs> It says bottom of the building element. Let's say you have um, um, still still flows or cantilevers, so on and so forth. That can also be modeled here in, in this particular format. Let's say I'll keep this as five, and you see how the building profile changes. It's a uh, left click. Okay, so you just have to. Fill it. I'll just remove this. I'll add. <coughs> this part. Let's go to 3D. Click here. You can see we have a building with some cantilevered part. OK, so uh, let's go back to 2D again. We have some more things. For example, let's say after building, you have something called vegetation. If you click on vegetation, and if you click on the tab, systems 3D, you can see that a number of elements are there. Okay, so trees, it's a small tree or large tree or medium tree size, whatever. What is the canopy so on and so forth? I think landscape uh, people must be knowing much better than this. Let's say much better. Uh, how do we take this into picture? Let's say I'll use some material here. Okay. Again, select that and just click on wherever you want it to happen. Random. Okay. Just go back to 3D and you can see this is how the small deciduous tree let us add one large deciduous tree dense canopy let's say we just add one <coughs> maybe here don't add too many things okay one grade itself is one tree okay so please remember that okay fine so you can have your own um uh, plan I'll, I'll show you also maybe how what is the best way of doing it but i'm just to start you can try this okay so we have buildings we had vegetation we have something called dem also this is also if required you do it otherwise uh don't find you don't have to change it for example uh, yes Sierra has raised her hand you can just yeah. sorry ma'am has sir? Uh, yes, sir. Actually, uh, when I have clicked this, um, the top of the building element 10 and the bottom of the building element 5, then when I'm clicking this on my screen after hmm. display, when I'm clicking on add and when I'm clicking that on the work area interface, then hmm. uh, from e at each point it is showing 10, 5, 10, 5, 10, 5. The same I could not see. Yes, 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 yes. Fine, fine. Th that indicates that that says that the height of the building is ten, the other one is five. That's fine. That's not an issue. And and that has, uh, I think I have clicked it many times, so that has came into repetitive manner. That have came so many times. Okay. And, so uh, you, you, you can remove. Projection wala ek jo jaise banaya hai, jisme niche ki taraf building niya, it's only the overhang. So how this cantilever portion has been done by you? I also want okay. to understand this. Fine. Uh, Let me add here. Let's say. I'll add another uh, cantilever part here. Okay, so I'll go to this. Uh, height of the building remains same, 10. Uh, here I'm going to give now, let's say, 3. Okay, add. 
and let's add it here. Let's go to 3D and see how it <clears throat> Okay, sir. Okay. और ये जो हमने पहले बॉटम फाइव किया था वो क्या रिप्रेजेंट करता है सर वो गैप गैप बिटवीन द टोटल हाइट ओके ओके ऑल राइट एंड प्लीज शो मी दिस ट्री थिंग वंस अगेन ओके सो गो टू वेजिटेशन ओके सो यू आइडेंटिफाई सम ट्री दैट यू वांट दैट यू हैव सीन इन द मॉडल और दैट That is there in your side. That has to be modeled. Okay, you can pick any of the trees, whatever, and just click once. Fair enough. Okay, sorry. Once again, it's loading. Okay, I think it's working. Anyway, let's move. Okay, we have something called dem. A uh, dem here in the sense, for example, let's say uh, uh, we have. Uh, this let's say this is your study area and you have uh, levels let's say this part is slightly higher and let's say this is divided in three parts this is uh, let's say 0.1 meter uh, sorry 1 meter this is 0.5 meters and let's say this is lowest part uh, we can't do this kind of model in envimet okay again how this will translate is you have to do the grids okay and this will be level this is will be point, uh, plus 1 meter plus 5 meters and so okay ideally for 50 meter by 50 meter or 25 meter i don't think there will be any much uh, that much slope that that we have to model otherwise uh, uh, in let's say if you if you have a larger uh, full version and you don't know how to bring dem data or the topographic data what we need to do is i'll just show a demo uh, so that uh, in case you have to model the uh, this part also you can do that okay so we just have to say what is the terrain height let's say uh, i want to make this this area seem like we have done for building we have to mark and make it as then uh, whatever height let's say fill this up so the model will assume that uh, these are 5 meter above ground okay so like we are trying to do for building this has to be done in the, in the, the same way for <coughs> uh, terrain as well okay so you can do that Okay, something is wrong. Let's fine. Let's go ahead. Fine. So we have another tab. It's called soil and surfaces. Okay. Let's say you have uh, you have to have address or you have to put pavements. Okay. Let's say this area is paved. This area is paved.
okay so depending on uh, the diagram or depending on the area that uh, sketch or probably you, you have in hand you can model it uh, you can assign the <coughs> uh, materials okay other than that let us say <coughs> okay this is an fair enough uh, for to to run simulation okay even with this we'll be in a position to run simulation okay so if you have more specific details or if you want to uh, add further things we can do that as well okay for example what what are the further things that can be done uh, let's say we have done this basic model now uh, you go here edit and it says there's something called convert this detail uh, convert to detailed design okay click here once you do this you will not be able to change anything okay just remember that if you click if you go to edit and say uh, convert to detail design you will not be able to uh, come back what are the things that can be edited is for example let's say you have this building i don't know for some reason i'm not able to load 3d anyway uh, if you want to change the uh, uh, the roof material or if you have some specific uh, glass material that has to be applied on some part of the structure all that can be done uh, using this okay so for that if you click uh, convert to detail okay. it's not happening okay <clears throat> anyway fine uh, maybe when we do the detail and assessment we'll, we'll do that again fine this is how you make the model okay let us assume that we have done the model now this has to be saved okay so what i do is you go to the first tab start and then save this model as okay so please make sure that this file is in the same folder as as that uh, the folder that you have created okay so we have created that folder in executive development. Sorry, D drive. Where did I create? Anyway, fine. Once again, I'll just save this model. For time being, I'll save it here in five. So there's this trial folder down. So I think there trial. So what we have done is we have modeled uh, an environment and we have saved an INX file. Okay, so this is the first file uh, which which describes what is the geometry and what is the surrounding that we have for which simulation has to be run. Okay, so this is the first uh, uh, first file that we need. Okay, now let us I'll close this. Now let's go to headquarters. And we have a second tab, it's called NV Guide. Okay, click on NV Guide. <coughs> now, uh, if you click on NV Guide, it says certain thing here. Okay, it says uh, this is uh, this is where we create something called CMAX file. Okay, first file that we have created is called INX file, that is that is the building model. The second file that we are going to create now is called CMAX file. Which is which is defining how much simulation has to be done, when simulation has to be done, what is the setting for simulation? Okay, so this is again very important uh, part. Here also we make a lot of mistakes. 
uh, just pay attention. What are the things that we should keep in mind? First thing, there are only two tabs here. One is gender setting, and the second one is um, uh, the climate data, meteorological aspect. <coughs> in the general setting, it says when the simulation has to be done. Okay, please mention the year, a month, and a date. Okay, and what is the starting time of the simulation? Let us say you are uh, trying to simulate between 1 to 3 p.m. or uh, uh, 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. or let's say you're, you're trying to simulate uh, only for one hour, let's say it's 3 p.m. So you, you should specify, okay, I want a simulation um, from 15 hours of a particular date on July so. What is the total simulation hour? I need only one hour of simulation. That is 3, 3 p.m. What is the uh, simulation line? Okay. So um, uh, we should specify, okay, what is the starting point? Or uh, we should specify what is the total duration of simulation that you want. 24 hours, if you put, let's say you can have more uh, as well. Uh, depending on system, uh, it, uh, it will take time, how much uh, rendering time it will take. For example, let's say uh, I, if I put one hour simulation, okay, uh, it took about 40 minutes or so for simulation. Okay, so please don't, by default, it will be 24 hours. When you run for the first time, please don't put as it is. Run for one hour, test, check whether you're getting the results. Then you, if you want, let's say eight hours of simulation or five hours of simulation, uh, all that you try to do it later. Okay, so please don't just say uh, run just directly don't save it by default it will be 24 hours and it will take ages maybe 12 hours 16 hours rendering time depending on the system that you have and all we can see is system is running it will not producing any results okay so many times that uh, uh, students have asked uh, system is running i'm not i'm not seeing any results because we by default it is 24 hours just remember that um, my, this system, with, with the system which I'm using now, uh, it took 40, 40 minutes for one hour of rendering. Let's say one hour for one hour rendering. 24 hours means it will run for 24 hours to, to generate 24 hours of simulation. So just thumb rule, remember that. So uh, let's say if you want only one hour of rendering, put one hour of rendering. And please mention when is the starting time of the <coughs> simulation. Okay, so this has to be defined. And uh, what is the final name is, is fine. Uh, if you want to keep some specific name, you name that. And this also has to be in the same file as that of the INX file. Okay. Uh, it is in the same folder. Uh, and again, it is asking uh, upload the model area. Okay. You can see this INX file. Okay. We need, you, you go here, click and then upload the model that we have just created. Okay, click OK. That's it. These are four settings that we need to do. Nothing more than this. Okay, please specify when the simulation has to be done, which year, which month, and which date, and when the simulation has to start, let's say 11 a.m. How many hours of simulations you need from 11 a.m.? 11 a.m. to 12, I need one hour of simulation, or 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., I need Five, six hours of simulation. Please specify that. Okay, for now, I'll just uh, uh, keep it one hour. You, 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 I, I would suggest you, you do one hour simulation only to start. Okay, so this is the first tab. Second tab, if you click, we have something called meteorology. And we have some uh, three tabs here. One, it says use simple force. The second one says use full force. The third one says use other uh, <coughs> Uh, uh, other settings. What is this uh, use simple force? If you click here, these are very basic information, uh, climate information that, that we can moderate. Okay, so it says what is the uh, minimum temperature, maximum temperature. Okay, what is the minimum humidity? What is the maximum humidity? Okay, you, if, you, if you have some specific data collected, up, up, update that. Okay, what uh, and also, if you go down here, we have what is the wind speed, what is the wind direction, what is the roughness length, uh, 
um, cloud cover, so on and so forth. I think there is one section uh, on uh, climate consultant tomorrow, and also uh, subsequently we have Andrew Marsh uh, introduction also. There will be a lot of discussion on what is uh, wind speed and how to take specific data, uh, what is roughness length. Uh, there will be discussion. Okay, so please pay attention. All this will be useful here. So that's why I said um, we can just say, okay, you can just come here, you can just click, say, simple force, so we can get started. Okay, that's not the intention. Okay, we'll not, we'll, uh, system will generate results, but we will not get to know what is the setting that we have kept. Okay, so please pay attention. This is one thing. Uh, in the basic things, we, we just need only temperature, humidity, wind speed, wind direction, if you know. Uh, wind direction also we know uh, for one hour on 15 uh, uh, 15 hours on july 7th what is the wind direction please specify that and accordingly it will generate results okay so these are the four parameters that we need to change now if you go to the second tab you have something called useful useful force if you click okay it is asking for some specific file okay so it says add file Accordingly, it will generate results. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> what are the files contain? It contains information about wind force, a wind. It, it contains information about temperature, about radiations and clouds, and about relative humidity and about rain. Okay. So somebody asked me, uh, asked, uh, can we model um, pollutant levels, right? Anthropogenic. Heat. We can also model rain. Uh, uh, the system has that much capacity. So I'll just click here to understand how it works. It is taking to some other tab. <clears throat> okay, what I have done, let me repeat in case I'm not able to follow. I have here, we have seen what is use, uh, use simple force. Okay, that's good enough to start. But now, okay, it's disabled. I said uh, we have clicked on the second part where it is asking for some specific file. Okay, so if you click on add FOX file, it is taking to some other tab. I'll tell you what information is required based on your applicability. You can do that. Yes, Rakesh. Sir, uh, what uh, what kind of file they need? Like uh, in yes, the weather yes. data, we need EPW file or TMI file. It will yeah. Uh, yeah, generate just, that kind of. Yeah, uh, your your answer is there in the next minute. Okay. Yeah? So if you okay. click on that, okay, maybe let's do it again. Add this FOX file. Okay, it is taking you to this tool. <coughs> Okay, now you can see that it, you, you have the calendar January to December and it is saying um, what information has been fed. As of now, no information has been fed. So that's why you can see it's all um, in gray. Now you go to data, you can see that there's certain information that we can do uh, import here. One, you can import from CSV files or you can import EPW file directly here. If you click here, if you have EPW file, let's say I'll go down. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, we, if you have EPW file, you can import EPW file. Let's say, what do you do? Import, click on import, and you you can download EPW file, and then upload it here. Okay, so for example, I have Chennai's data, let's say. So now Chennai's data has been uploaded. We have um, uh, hourly data, okay? 8,760 hours of data set is available. This is another way of uh, giving information. Now let us say you have, you can see this tab here. It says only valid values, only EPW file. All the colors has been changed to EPW file. 
it also has a tab something called only measurement values so we can we can do an assessment in three ways okay so let's say if you have only site measurements how do you import site measurements uh, or let's say how how did we import epw file you just downloaded an uh, weather file and we have uh, uploaded here what is a weather file where do we get a weather file uh, i think there will be uh, i think that will also be introduced tomorrow and day after if you if you are still not uh, aware where do we get the cpw files and all uh, please pay attention again or uh, get this information this is very very basic information like i said uh, there are certain basic uh, prerequisites before we come to this particular tool okay so let us say you have you uh, you went to site using measure uh, using instruments you have collected information for one week or one month time okay like i said in my introductory part data can also be collected from primary sources right so if you have uh, that data in hand what are the data that we need is we it has to be uploaded here in this file in the form of csv files we need date time yeah the the solar radiations in watts per meter square and so on and so forth air temperature relative humidity so on and so forth okay all this is required okay so you can <coughs> uh if you have data logger it will automatically collect information okay so you just have to process clean all other data set and you put it in the head where you want for, for example let's say you are not interested in uh, all aspects you want only uh, air temperature and uh, wind speed so on and so forth you get uh, input or from the uh, from the uh, physical survey and so on and so forth get those data and upload it as csv file that will also get uploaded and it will show for example let's say in we do we may not have the data set for entire year we may have data set only collected for let's say march 1 to 7 okay so that can also be integrated here fine so this is uh, slightly advanced uh, but this is an important question also uh, because sometimes uh, some of you have um uh, instruments and we go to into site and collect the data but we don't know how to feed it how do we use it in the system okay so there are two ways uh, the, the first one is uh, for the beginners just use basic information uh, like uh, use simple force just give information about temperature humidity wind speed wind direction and roughness values sir okay sir if we uh, only use simple forcing for yeah. uh, simulation uh, yeah. is it okay is it right, uh, is it okay, okay? it will, uh, it will uh, see by default we have already assigned this to some specific location and it, it the, this, the system will assign specific weather for that for that okay yes. but still okay but we uh, many times we need control on what what is the input like okay so this is required actually okay sometimes maybe you are you have collected uh, let's say if you have seen weather file in the weather file probably you have collected something like Except, this sir uh, in 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 weather file in normally the air temperature is around 35 degree celsius or yeah. it, if i go to the uh, study area and, and collected the data that time the data shows it's 38 but yes. maximum temperature is 35 yes and mm -hmm. after after giving the maximum temperature in uh, in the simple forcing uh, the uh, collected data is 38 the maximum temperature is 35 and after the simulation the result shows that the study area has uh, got uh, The maximum temperature is 32 around actually uh, it 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 happens to me that's why i am asking ke what will uh, i do for the simple forcing or what will i uh, do for uh, the forcing parameter right? yeah, yeah temperature or simple forcing or uh, epw file it is no if you have uh, epw file and if you can run uh, the, the ideal way is to give your own data set Okay, because okay. primary data is more authentic, uh, more uh, more authentic in the sense more realistic. So if you have primary data in proper format, you do that. Or if you uh, if you don't have some specific data, you have weather file with you, and if you want to go ahead with weather file, 
uh, that will also be an ideal condition. For the beginners, let's say if you don't know anything of weather file, what is a weather file contains like, and I know only uh, temperature, I can understand only uh, by reading at climate data, I can only modify temperature, humidity, and maybe wind speed. Just do the changes, three, four changes here. Okay, you don't have to do anything else. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay, fine. So let us assume that we have uh, used uh, simple force and then we have uh, assigned certain temperature. Okay. Now, what we need to do is again save this file. I'll just save this file as a Cinex file. Let's say. In the same folder. Okay. So if we have uh, this part is also done. Okay. So we'll just close this. What we have done so far, we have created an INX file that is the model. And we have also created second file, which is simx file, which is nothing but simulation file. Okay, two steps are done. Now let's go to this main tab. <coughs> uh, we have done this. The third tab is NVMet code, NV code. Click on this. If you click on this, you get a tab like this. This is where actual simulation takes place. Okay, so let's go here, click. This is the folder that we created. Automatically it reads INX file, also the sim simulation file that we have uh, <coughs> given. Okay, if there are no errors here, so which means your model and the simulation file is good enough for uh, running the simulation. Okay, please note that if you are making higher models here, you will get errors. Um, that's why this uh, caution is given here. Okay, so please make sure that your model is within the size since we are using trial version. If you have full version, of course, there's no, there's no need to worry about it. So uh, uh, once you load this, now go to uh, open CMAX file click the simulation file that we have just created. We said 15 hours of uh, simulation on a July uh, some, some day. Click on this. Okay, so this is also done. So uh, you can see we have uh, up uploaded the CMAX file. Okay, check for simulation. <clears throat> Maybe I think because of that tree that we kept sometime. Yeah, you can see as this we have kept one unusual tree. It is taking time. Okay. Uh okay, so let me repeat this step once. What we need to do is we just have to go here, upload that particular file where uh, INX file will be uploaded. Then you come here and click on this uh, folder and choose the simulation file that uh, that you have done. Okay, simulation file in the sense uh, where we have defined uh, use simple force, uh, simulate for one hour on a particular date. Okay, so the, that's the setting that we have kept. Then check simulation and run simulation. I'm not going to run simulation because it will take a lot of time. But I'll tell you uh, once you click on run simulation, it will generate. It will go to sim uh, simulation. It will take um, depending on the number of hours that you have given. Uh, uh, it, it will take how much time um, for simulation. Once you go to Let's say once the simulation is done, what we will get is we'll get a last page like this, which says, for example, let's say this I tested yesterday. Uh, we started the simulation about uh, around uh, uh, 
15 uh, sorry 543 okay and uh, what is the time needed for initiation what is the main how much time it took for main simulation so on and so forth and total simulation hour uh, is about uh, 28 minutes for one hour of simulation okay it has nothing it had just one building and a couple of trees nothing more than that so uh, please don't put if you have good system if you have a desktop where you have good uh, uh, gpu and uh, let's or let's say if you have gaming laptops uh, you can try uh, uh, you, you can you can go for uh, longer duration of simulation otherwise we need to have very good simulate uh, system otherwise uh, it will take hours and hours um, <coughs> for generating results and once simulation is done you will get a tab here uh, and of course there will be a progress bar uh, once the simulation gets started you, will, you can see one percent over two percent over and so on and so forth and once this is done you will get the simulation is completed and we'll have files for um, reading okay i'm not going to put uh, for simulation um, because it will take time <clears throat> already it is hanging anyway so what i'm going to do now is i'll show you the output files for similar project and then we'll see how to read the results yes priyanka uh, so after selecting the file which we have created that is edp pa2 uh, yeah. i have got the complete project loaded so it has uh, took me to the end and it is showing project loaded but okay. i can't see something like what you have shown where it is showing the uh, time will be one hour wo wala chart aapko kahan se dikh raha tha sir jahan pe aap dikha rahe the ki simulation and time one second uh, are you referring to this page yes and the core wala yahi wala this page haan ji shayad ho sakta hai aap ye wala page dikha rahe ho where you were showing about the simulation time which will be one hour okay 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 fine so uh, actually in this in this file also haan ji okay. there will be an estimated time in the beginning uh, somewhere there will be an estimated time for simulation uh, also okay i'm not uh, thing still loading okay uh, we'll have two information okay in the once this i uh, still i have not clicked run simulation it is still uh, checking the simulation okay whether uh -huh. the model is in order or not once that is done <coughs> then we can go and click run simulation uh -huh. uh, then once the simulation gets started you will get a status bar here something like this okay All what right. is the status of your simulation once it is done it will show 100% and you will have this final line mm -hmm. uh, saying uh, this is the initiation time uh, total mm -hmm. time and okay. your work is done okay, okay. Right. simulation is done okay you will get a message then the files are created mm, those files we can use it for uh, uh, further thing right. okay 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 right. Okay, so for now, let's go to. These are other files which uh, are still taking time. I think it is making now. This is what we have made, and I think already it has created files. Okay, you can see the time three fifty seven. What is the time now? Four three. So at three fifty seven, it has created time, and probably it is uh, creating database for simulation. Okay. So let's not go to this. Let's see. I've done something. This is done. Yeah. So once you are done with your simulation, you will get. Uh, if you go and check the folder, you will have information like this. There will be something called atmosphere, biomat, um, building, so on and so forth. Now the trick. Now, now the uh, question is, how do we read this? Okay. So let's come back to the main menu. So we have used space for modeling. We have used NV guide for simulation. We used NV core for running the simulation. We have something called Leonardo for visualizing the results. Okay, so that's how the tool works. So I'll just click on Leonardo.
okay so you we, we get a tab like this okay so again first thing let's go to our respective folder and see uh, which is which is the folder okay at the moment there is no uh, file in this edp trial 2 which i created which is still running the simulation i'll use some other file which i have created previously okay let's say i'll go to edp trial <coughs> click on this okay you can see on this side we have something called uh, files extract so on and so forth you can come down is something called select file okay uh, we have something called file set a file set b we can compare two results let's say you have run simulation for 15 hours and you have run simulation for let's say you have run simulation for 11 am and you have run simulation for 15 hours in the afternoon and you want to compare simultaneously how at 11 am what is the picture like and 15 hours what is the picture like okay so in set a we have to select that particular file in set b we have to select that particular file for now we are just going ahead with one let's say uh, set a select data okay i'll just click on the folder now it is asking the file okay so let me go to the basic <coughs> Okay, so uh, I'll go here. Let's see. So these are the data sets that can be read and visualized here. I'll go to uh, buildings. Okay, click on any one of the file, PDX file, and click on extract map to data. Okay, so nothing is there. Okay. No information is there. So let's take some other file. Go to atmosphere. Uh, okay. EDX. Okay. Yeah. Extract file. Uh -huh. So, yeah. This EDX file will only be created once we have run the simulation. Since we have yes, not yes. Run, run it yet, so we have no EDX file right now. Yes, yes, yes. You will not add because I had already run it, ran the simulation. So that's why I have these are other files. Right, okay? right. Sir. Once you run the simulation, you will get uh, you will get folders like this with a, a number of folders with some output. Okay, in, under each folder. So what what we are trying to do is we are trying to read uh, any one of the folders from there. So once you click on this, you it, it will say you, very briefly, this is the total amount of data available in that particular data set. Okay, there is only one hour of data available that you can see it is highlighted here. Okay, in this file, there's only one data uh, which has uh, where uh, morning 6 a.m. there is one, one hour of simulation that has taken place. If you have <coughs> run simulation for four hours, you will get that, okay, this six seven eight nine will be highlighted meaning uh, we have four hours of simulation or five hours of simulation ten hours of simulation depending on the simulation that you have done i click on this double click on this go to next tab Sir, sir, uh, sir, go to file, file A, then set a data. Sir, uh, you should, uh, I, I think you should uh, select the atmosphere file. Okay, atmosphere file only I have selected. Once again, I will just see. Okay, maybe fine. 
let me check ha <coughs> ma'am nee bag nee ha ma Yeah, just open the atmosphere file. Yeah, yeah, but uh, no. Uh, I think you. Uh, it is below one. You can now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that five. No, no, not that. Just open the file. No, not that. Uh, no. In, in, so go to the EDP EDP trial. Ah, uh, atmosphere. Then to top atmosphere. top top is atmosphere. No, sir, back back. This file only. So go to EDP EDP trial. Then first one atmosphere. Yeah. 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 Click it. Then the time uh, where show is five five, five a.m. Uh, the second five. The second. The, uh, uh, this one. No, it's not loading. That's right. No. Sir, so it, it is load. It, it is. It, it is just loaded. I yeah. think it's below one. You like then, to change the. Lane. Then extract the, the data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where where is that? I am not able to see. No, the left hand side you change change the values. Mm -hmm. Ask. Uh, go to. No, no, no. One second. No, I'll I'll just use some other file. Let me put up. Hmm. Something here. I'll just. Sorry, one second. Let me check again. <coughs> Sir, after selecting file, we should. Uh, uh, no, that uh, extract tab is not visible. Okay.
No, I am not able to figure out. Actually, there will be an extract. Uh, yeah, fine. But okay. So I, I think let's do it again. Uh, for now, let me plot some results, and then you'll see. So once you extract the data here, uh, we have all these uh, variables that can be plotted. Okay, so uh, flow, airflow, wind, uh, pressure, temperature, humidity, so on and so forth. Uh, all this we need to have an understanding. Okay, uh, otherwise, again, it will be an issue. So for now, let's say I'll plot uh, temperature and uh, wind speed on the other side, extract 2D. <coughs> okay. So uh, this is one of the output uh, that we can see here. Okay. So what we have done is, um, let me check again if I can do it. Okay. Go to end the Leonardo. Okay, go to the specific file. Okay, assign specific file. Click on uh, click on this, select file. Go to that specific folder where you have uh, information. I hope you the same. Okay, I, I get what what is the issue. Okay, so I, I think the issue is this uh, once you uh, go to that file, uploading the file, okay, click extract. Okay, once you click extract, you, you will get to see all the uh, all the variables that 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 can be plotted. Okay, so let's keep the temperature, wind speed, extract in two D format. <clears throat> okay, so this is the basic output that we have got. Okay, by default, uh, but not by default. By uh, we have said plot potential temperature. Uh, and that's why we are, we are getting to see this. Okay, so how do we control this uh, output on on this side? On the left hand side, we have certain variables. Where we can use, uh, where we can uh, change the uh, outputs. Okay, uh, here in this tab, apart from uploading, we also have something called we can uh, visualize us in 3D. All or we, if you want to take some sections. Okay, so uh, if you want to check across, okay, across the bill, uh, the site, how the profiling is like, that can also be done. Okay, so both in 2D and also in cross sections that we can uh, we can do. Okay, at the moment let's keep it to plan. Okay, and you have uh, all the controls, uh, all uh, the controls on the left hand side. Okay, so starting from map, uh, general setting, uh, text that you want to uh, modify. Okay. I'll just slow it down. Okay, these are basic information that uh, that can be modified. Okay, how do you turn on this? Some of the, um, for example, let's say um, you have to do right click okay, to turn on or turn off that particular layer. Okay, so this is slightly strange, but that's how it works. Uh, you have to do right click for uh, turning on and turning off. And if you ha want to have control on your X axis, Y axis, all that you can do. And you have to, uh, every time, uh, please make sure that any changes that you want, uh, you want this uh, to be updated in, in the drawings, 
uh, you must uh, uh, you you must update it here. Okay, for example, let's say uh, I'll change these values and there's a uh, button here, uh, update it here. So that whatever changes that you're trying to make <coughs> uh, gets reflected. Okay, so all this you can try, this all just for plotting. A uh, few things that that is interesting is, for example, let's say uh, this is on the actual layer okay so you, you can in fact bring a building layers and then uh, superimpose as well <clears throat> uh, let's say you want to change the uh, the how, how the plotting is done you can click on this okay right click on this and then uh, you can use specific outputs and how you want to do it, all that can also be uh, modified. Okay, it's all just for visualization purpose. Uh, you, can, you can try. Okay, uh, other than that, uh, for example, let's say you have uh, specific, specific layers. Uh, uh, what is superimposed is the, is the building. Okay, and if you want, uh, it's too dark, right? So of course you can change all that. You don't want to see all the vegetation part <coughs> uh, to be highlighted, but we need to show the building. So you can mod moderate on the uh, building uh, profile, or how it looks and so on. All that can be done. And if you want to, bring in legend for that as well. You can right click this on this layer. You'll be able to get that. And the interesting thing is the vector and particles. Uh, vector, if you click, right click, so you can see the win uh, information that can also be plotted here. So you can do the moderation of that. Let's say, Okay, this is actually kind of a channel, so you can see how the then direction is going and <clears throat> all that can be done. So these are just presentation, okay? So there is no end to, uh, what is it? For this, uh, till you require, or till you get the desired output, you can uh, modify. Uh, <clears throat> you can of course bring the wind speed or whatever other uh, information that you have plotted can also be done here. We can also do the contour for that. Uh, suppose you, you have uh, different uh, <clears throat> layers to be shown in specific contours, you just have to adjust and see what is the contours in terms of temperature or in terms of uh, uh, wind information can also be checked actually. Okay, so this is all just for visualization purpose. Okay, so the crux is Yeah, so we have, um, let's go back to this. So we need an uh, INX file. Okay, this is about model. Okay, and the second file is simulation file. That is for uh, defining when the simulation has to take place, what is the 
a duration like and what is in, uh, what is the <coughs> uh, timing and so on and so forth and then you we, we need these two files for running simulation and uh, once we run the simulation we we need another uh, we, we get a lot of uh, folders uh, that has got simulated results so that can be read using leonardo tool okay so uh, basically we need uh, we need to have good understanding or we need to run, know how to run space tool uh, nv guide okay that is about setting simulation uh, nv core is where the actual simulation uh, uh, runs and we have something called uh, leonardo where you can do the uh, where we can actually do the um, uh, where we can read the results okay uh, that that's good enough for uh, to to start with the model okay now we do have other tools also and we have some more time as well uh, very quickly another 15 minutes um, we have not seen moon we have not seen uh, biomet and we also have in this if you if you go here if you click on data setting we also have three more uh, tabs here one as i showed uh, uh, other tabs here we'll see what is that as well very quickly and then we call it a day click on moon okay so uh, this is the platform where we can get where we can uh, bring the gis files uh, and uh, trace out the base and then uh, go ahead and then uh, model it okay so for example let's say uh, if you uh, again uh, in 50 50 40 i don't think uh, there's, no, there's no point in uh, the, we don't have to spend time here uh, because uh, we are talking about a larger scale uh, you already have js base map and you just want to con take that uh, into model and work okay uh, we'll not go into details also because i don't know whether it is um, uh, we have that kind of requirement but it's possible okay very quickly for example let's say uh, first I, what i do is uh, i'll just go here uh, if you have some shape files okay i have downloaded a few shape files just for demonstration purpose. Uh, otherwise also, for example, let's say I have a kept a reference. I have a, a database for Vijayawada. Okay, so I have uh, the JS files of Vijayawada, for example, let's say municipal boundary of Vijayawada. Okay, so if I click open and uh, use the uh, base map, and uh, this is 44 UTM, uh, that's why I said, see, some information, uh, some basic information we should know, uh, only then these, uh, these additional tools will be useful. For example, let's say, what is UTM? If you don't know, it is better that we don't, you don't come to this tool, uh, this part of the tool. Okay. So for example, let's say if I do that, say click import. Okay, so this is the entire Vijayawada city and uh, it, it's a georeferenced file, okay? What is the advantage of this? If I go here now and say get JSM data, uh, oh, sorry, not JSM data, the OSM open street map data for this particular location, it will be able to extract, okay? I'm not going to do that for Vijayawada case because it is a huge and the data set is huge, okay? And it will take uh, maybe hours to uh to uh, extract the data i'll show you some demo information uh, demo data so that we can see what is the possibility i'll go to open shape i go to desktop
I've created one uh, <coughs> uh, polygon here. For example, let's say I'll show you the site also. I'm sorry, I've deleted it. Actually, uh, uh, let's say this is the study area that you are interested in. You can map it, convert this into shape file, and then import it as well. Okay. Uh, how do you do conversion from? Uh, you can export uh, here. You can export this into KMZ file, and there are tools for converting KMZ file into shape files also. Okay. So I have done that just to show you demo. Uh, what kind of information that we can extract? So this is one such uh, shape file for closer to our campus. I'll just open that. I'll just click OK. 44. No. OK. OK. So this is the uh, study area that I'm interested in. Now I'll do, I'll go to get OSM online. OK. So what I do is click here. You can see already that these are the information that is already available in OSM data. Okay, so whatever information that you want, you, we can extract and then keep it here. Okay, so for for example, uh, we, uh, some of the cities have very rich uh, information, hmm? rich data set is there in OpenStreetMap, and we don't have to sit and uh, uh, what do you say? We don't have to sit and draft all again so uh, we can do that okay all that is possible and once you say finish we'll have this as uh, it will <clears throat> import and we'll have that as a database uh, then we can use this for modeling okay so mont uh, uh, yeah another thing that you can do is we can also generate uh, terrain natural terrain uh, if you have dem data with you uh, create that terrain and then use that as a base for uh, modeling, precise modeling. Okay, so this is one tool. Uh, maybe, like I said, this is all advanced. Uh, you, you just don't try this um, uh, unless you really need it. That's one. We also have something called Biomet. Okay, so if you click on Biomet. <coughs> Yeah, I can parallelly show one more thing. If you generate results, if you generate the simulation results, what you will get is, yeah. For example, let's say we are interested in uh, not only simulating the temperature wind profile of a building, we also have uh, want to extract PET values for that for that particular uh, part, UTCA values, ACT values, PMV, PPD. Uh, what is all this? I think, like I said, we need uh, an understanding. Only then this can be used. Okay, it's not. Uh, 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 otherwise, it will not be uh, appropriate. In default or in the light version, we get uh, PMB PPD outputs. Uh, we, we don't have option for creating UTCI and ACT. Okay, uh, maybe in the uh, <clears throat> uh, in the full version, we'll be able to create all this. And once uh, once we have that, for example. So under each set, we'll have uh, information to read. Okay, so we'll have PET values generated for that particular site, PMV, SET, uh, UTCA value created for that. At the moment, when you go to uh, Biomet and say generate uh, the uh, values we will get only pmv values okay so other other things are uh, we can do in higher versions again we need uh, 
for this, we need two things. One is the uh, model and the uh, INX file, okay, where the simulation has to go and where the uh, INX file is. It's simple that. We also have, okay, this, these are other simulation that can be done. <clears throat> we have also, we also have two more things. One is, uh, we have seen this very quickly again. We can directly come here and then define what is the weather file and what is the data set that you want, uh, uh, how to set this I've shown. Okay, so we can set this and then use this FOX file for simulation. Okay, so before we actually start the uh, simulation, you already have the data set in hand. Let's say you clear everything and then you keep the files ready. Okay, save it. And then you um, you can go and create models and do that. Okay, so two ways of doing it, right? So one set we can have EPW file or you can have uh, the CSV file where, uh, where we have to feed information like this and then uh, you will be able to see uh, what are the additions that you have made here and uh, and so on and so forth okay so we have two more tools left one is called uh, the db manager <coughs> click here if you click on this uh, we have uh, these are these are uh, this is the tool where we have control on the materials. What are the properties of the material thickness? Uh, it's uh, it's it's all physical and uh, uh, all other properties of the materials can be controlled here. For example, let's say uh, under soil you have a lot of information. Okay. For example, let's say when you say cement concrete, uh, what is the value it is taking? Okay. What is the conductivity of that uh, what is the conductivity it is assuming not assuming uh, in, 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 let's say if you choose if you choose uh, this particular material cement concrete with this particular uh, uh, material id these are the information that is going into the model these are the information that is going as input to the model for running the simulation okay so many a times this is also a crucial okay so for beginners uh, we are just concerned only with the profile of the building, how the profile of the building or uh, and its context is influencing. So we are not much worried about uh, how the these material changes will have an impact. But uh, later, let's say I want to quantify um, how much heat we are getting from the wall and how will will change in material surface material will impact the uh, surrounding temperatures. And if you want to quantify or moderate that, we need to have control on this as well. Okay, so we can have control or uh, we can create our own database on soil uh, <clears> or <throat> ground, plants, okay, wall materials, construction, so on and so forth. What is the difference between this? Uh, there's are the two tabs. If you remember, in the in the modeling tab, we have two things. Okay, one it says uh, you can see the indication here. This is for the surface material. <coughs> this is for the roof. Okay, board. It, it will. It will look like. Uh, uh, where is it? Yeah. Okay. So if you go into the properties, let's say uh, I'm going into the wall roof materials. This is only roof. Okay. So when we finish. Okay, so what is the finish like? And we can have what is the thermal conductivity of this? Uh, what is the reflectivity, emissivity of this particular material? <clears throat> but if you go to construction, okay, and let's say if you click on uh, any of the materials, let's say wall, okay, uh, uh, please, uh, you, you, uh, anyway, you will not be able to edit this um, even if you go there. If you want to edit this, right click and make a uh, create a copy of this item okay and then please change the id okay manage dot manage yes rakesh okay. 
Okay, so please change the ID so that uh, it does not duplicate or it does not uh, uh, overwrite on the original material. Okay, and then if you click, double click on this, you have a lot of options on how do you control the material? What is the thickness of the material, which is outside, which is inside, and you have some materials to be sandwiched between, you want to change the thickness of some specific materials, all that can be done, okay? These are actually the next level of um, customization or specific, uh, if, you're, if you're looking for very precise answers, uh, you should be in it, uh, doing all this, okay? So this is on, <coughs> yes, Adil. Aditi, sorry. Yes, go ahead. Aditi. Okay, fine. Okay, so we have. He's uh, talking, uh, Dr. Fias, but her voice is very. Aditi, can you be louder? Okay. <laughs> Maybe Aditi can just type it in the. In sketch. She's saying in SketchUp can we use Tendi Man for materials or something? I don't know. I have not tried. Uh, I don't think. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I can't say I don't. Uh, there's no material. Maybe there is a plugin. But ideally, uh, you should work on the same platform. Uh, no, I think from SketchUp we can import. We can model in SketchUp and it could be imported and then you can assign the details. That's possible. Okay. Okay. Right. <clears throat> okay. So you can have uh, controls on other uh, materials as well. Okay. So this is again, this is important uh, aspect where, uh, where we have control on the material that we are trying to apply on the building, okay? And the last one that we have not checked is Alvero. Okay. Here you can have uh, you can have control on the way the uh, tree uh, is modeled. Okay, so maybe landscape architects who uh, who knows uh, who have, let's say there's a specific tree that you need to be modeled. There are so many parameters. I don't know what is what, but there are a lot of parameters. Uh, uh, I have not seen any other tool where for three so much of so many variables and uh, parameters are given for uh, moderation okay so if you have specific information or so specific tree has to be modeled all that you can just uh, try and see uh, how things have been done here okay and in addition there is already huge list of uh, a list of database of trees are available already here. So you can take it from there and then how it works. And also, uh, I think uh, this is the, the screen that you see here. Uh, it shows the, the canopies in X and Y, or I don't know um, how, you, if you have information on this, for example, let's say, of the, the x-axis okay what is the foliage on and that level okay x-axis or in the y-axis okay so you can you can see the uh, <coughs> sections here uh, if you have precise uh, in the sense uh, that level of modeling can be done for tree okay so so much of um, uh, Flexibility is there. If you are very specifically, you have uh, you have information on that that can be modeled and saved, and then 
uh, you can run that for uh, for simulation okay so there's only one thing which i remember which i have not touched is uh, <clears throat> yeah two more thing uh, one is let, let's see if i have something to Yeah, maybe I'll just write it here. Uh, one, I think, uh, for transportation related stuff. Okay, so we have uh, there's a possibility of modeling uh, uh, point source data. And let's say if your point source data collected from different uh, locations, and then if you want to model that in the form of um, uh, heat quantification or pollution quantification, that can be done. Uh, the the second thing, which is which is very new to NVMet itself, is dynamic uh, thermal comfort. Since it is an uh, uh, what is it? Trial version. We don't have the tool for uh, running simulations and seeing it, but you can see their website. Um, at the moment, what we can do is we can generate a CT, a UTCI uh, for a specific uh, time and specific uh, point. Okay. So if you uh, now they have introduced a tool where you can do dynamic assessment or dynamic. Um, assessment of ACT, UTCI, and so on and so forth. Okay, so if uh, if you see the uh, the tutorial there, they mentioned let's say if, if I sit here for some time, one hour, so my body is going to behave differently, right? So uh, the amount of heat that I generate will be higher or lower depending on what uh, activity I've done. So how do you bring that dynamism? Uh, component for generating results. All that is also possible uh, in the latest version. Okay, so that's it. So with that, I'll stop. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can let me know. <clears throat> yes. Dr. Faiz, you had said that we could model uh, anthropogenic heat from air conditioning. Yeah. Where yeah, yeah. can we model that? And for transport also, where which module should you know can we go and give the data? Yeah, that's what I was trying to look. Okay. Uh, it's in DB Manager. Sorry, ma'am. It's in DB Manager sources. A uh, DB Manager sources. Yeah, go to DB Manager. <coughs> the last one. So, yeah. yeah. You have uh, test lines and fountains. I have not tried, so I don't know. Go to traffic tool on the right hand side. Huh. Yeah. So, so you can input all this. Whatever you have collected on site. Okay. Okay. And how do we do for uh, air conditioned buildings? Like this is for traffic. Air condition, uh, I. Uh, we've not. Uh, I I think that has not been. I'm not sure if it is integrated. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Thanks, Dr. Lily. Thanks. Okay. Then uh, that's it. If you have any questions, you can you know. I think we are within time. <coughs> I can thank you for us, sir. It was very interesting session and completed within time. I know, but uh, if you have any question, kindly ask us.
anyway records recordings might be sent to the registered participants and uh, as we are sending recordings also we also uh, make sure that our attendance is also important uh, it is not like that if we are sending the recordings so you should not attend you can understand first and then we will send it in the last we are just editing it uh, if no questions then we close the session yes ma'am i hope it was uh, helpful for you to at least uh, to begin with and uh, with all the basics mm -hmm. now tomorrow uh, uh, again we are going to meet uh, uh, tomorrow again we are going to meet for our third session uh, that will be from dr janme jay gupta he is associate professor in department of architecture from spa vijayawada and he is going to talk about the climate consultant and autodex ecotech uh, software uh, uh, i hope uh, you all understood all these two sessions were uh, informative for you and definitely it will take time for you to do uh, practice and you have to do the practice and then only you are going to get it so we are going to give all the session recording soon so thank you all thank you all the participants and uh, all the faculty members who joined from spv and also all uh, head and deans uh, uh, who joined here and our all coordinators and co coordinators who actually planned this to happen and it is happening so we are very happy <laughs> to do this thank you so much uh, with this i uh, uh, will close the session Yeah. If Jamal sir have any query questions to inform. Yes, sir. If Jamal sir have any query questions, sir can inform what. Ah, uh, we will again. You all can watch the uh, this uh, check the Google Classroom. Ah, uh, so definitely Jamal sir will also put some ah uh, pre request ah uh, pre download link over there. So. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, I can just copy paste from that Google uh, a classroom only here. If they, if it's more convenient for them, so they can just look through. I basically require them uh, to uh, have that uh, which I've already shared today. That uh, where the all the EPW files are available globally, and then of course the basic climate consultant uh, software download, free download, and EcoTech is even. There are crack versions existing still of uh, the Autodesk version. Uh, so if they uh, are able to crack it, they can download it, or else uh, they can uh, use the Revit plugin. So if they are ready with that, then that's better. Yeah. So I'll share the links uh, which I pasted in the Google Classroom here itself uh, for ready reference before we close. Maybe uh, just give me two minutes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely, sir. after the last session uh, on the 5th day we are going to circulate the uh, uh, feedback also kindly give us a feedback how can we improve and uh, we definitely plan another edp also like this so we request you to fill the feedback also on the final day all the participants kindly look into in the chat box there are certain links has been given by janme joy sir so kindly uh, copy it so that you can uh, 
open it up and save uh, for the coming session. Okay, yes, dear participants, uh, I have shared a few links regarding uh, the very basic things that I'm going to discuss tomorrow. Uh, one of them is, of course, the global climate links, EPW files of everywhere. You will be yourself surprised once you enter the site how many areas uh, EPW files you'll find. Uh, that's number one. Number two is, of course, uh, I, I guess more and more, many of you would be aware of Climate Consultant, uh, but there's still a lot of things in that which we tend to ignore so um, that you can download and of course the last link that i have shared is the ecodect analysis which in itself was a very good software uh, it was one of the forerunners of all these softwares and uh, the, the grid pattern and the modeling techniques used are very similar to what is used in design builder and even what uh, fire showed today in uh, nvman the same um, modeling techniques, grid, the basic um, uh, system, programming uh, system is the same. So that I have said. Now, of course, it's uh, available along with Revit. So if you are conversant with Revit, you can uh, add it as a plugin. Uh, yes, so three versions are available. And then there are versions of even the older versions, Autodesk versions uh, existing, which can be opened with a crack. So uh, uh, basically, I'll see you tomorrow then uh, the, and I would uh, end and uh, hand over to Prashanti ma'am by saying what, uh, one uh, thing. Uh, both these presentations yesterday and today by my fellow colleagues were very, very comprehensive. But the yesterday's presentation uh, was, you know, uh, uh, I, I uh, understand that it is a uh, it involves more of computing, which uh, not all of you would be very conversant with. It was excellently shown and some of the participants excellently, excellently responded as well. But it was more about involved uh, algorithm based computation. And so uh, and today's, of course, what Dr. Fires showed was NVMet, which is one of the most commonly used softwares today uh, nowadays. But it's more at, uh, uh, at a site level and uh, it has a wider array of uh, utilities. Now, tomorrow we are get, getting down into the basics of building level, basically. You know, the final, uh, uh, the first rather, not the final, the first goal is, of course, to design a building which responds to the climate. And for that, tomorrow's session will be more um, uh, more uh, in line with the, the basic aspect of designing climate responsive building and how to make the softwares work for us in that way. And other than that, of course, Ecotech uh, being one of the first generation uh, uh, simulation softwares, it also offers everything uh, starting from uh, uh, daylighting levels, illumination levels to um, you know thermal comfort calculation levels, zone wise and total even basics of energy modeling it actually offers, which we'll discuss tomorrow. But it's basically at a building level now that first two days you have had um, in two different aspects, basically. And um, so, and of course, I, as I understand, and a few of you may be also looking at that aspect of how to uh, do the basics first. And uh, so uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, tomorrow some of these issues will be dealt with. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Prashanti, ma'am. Thank you, Janmeja, sir, for your uh, uh, like uh, telling them what should be the pre, pre request from our participants that they should uh, they should do this. And then they you all will uh, join quickly so that we can start the session quickly. I think uh, Sir has some travel plans tomorrow, so we will start at a time. Okay, Sir. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So I would like to thank you all the participants over here and all the coordinators. Uh, so thank you all. And with this, I'm uh, closing the session. Thank you.